Hi everyone, it's Jeff Challen again. This is the last screencast on Test 161, and in this one we're going to show you how to use Test 161 to actually submit your assignments, which assuming this assume, I'm assuming is something that you know you want to do. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, in the previous ones we showed you how to run tests using Test 161. Uh, in the last assignment I showed you how to configure things to submit. So I'll just review a few of those things. Um, you need to start by going over to our test161.opsclass.org server logging in with your credentials. Okay, now what you'll see here, uh, this uh, documentation is not completely up to date. Uh, for now, please continue to use uh, the documentation here. At some point that'll be fixed and this will go away, but this is the better documentation right now. Uh, it's more complete and has the, the screencasts embedded and things like that. Okay, uh, so now, uh, but you remember I had to do a couple of things to get this started. One was I had to adjust my test161.conf file in addition to the root dir and the test 161 dir, I needed to configure a server, which is test161.opsclass.org, a repository, which is a remote repository that I set up on the class GitLab server. Yours may be somewhere else. Um, and then I had to tell test161 who I was submitting on behalf of. So that's me, challenge.edu. And that's a token uh, that I generated here. And just, you know, just for uh, safety's sake, I will change that token as soon as these screencasts are up. So please don't try to use it to submit as me. Um, okay, so now here's uh, my public key. Um, that last thing I had to do was configure my Git repository that holds my OS161 sources so that test161, the test161 backend could clone it. And in order to do that, so here is my OS161 sources. I just uh, committed some changes to this. Um, over here on my settings page, and this is on GitLab, go over to deploy keys. This is the deploy key I added. Uh, this matches this key right here. Um, and that's important. Uh, that allows the test161 backend to clone my repository for testing. Okay, so that's uh, all set up. Um, now I'm going to walk you through the process of, of doing your first submission. So the first thing I want to emphasize here is the test 161 is not designed to do a lot of back-end testing as part of an iteration loop for you to be in. So the test 161 tool runs locally um, and it runs very efficiently locally on purpose. That's to allow you to iterate, make changes, get an estimate, a pretty good estimate of how you're going to do on the assignment before you submit. So before you submit anything, please run test 161 locally look at the output and decide that this is what you want or this is something that you're happy with. If the deadline is approaching, I would also encourage you to submit early. Submit early and often. You can submit as many times as you want up to the deadline, but no times after the deadline will be counted. So, you know, uh, you know, if it's an hour before the deadline and you guys are struggling to finish up something, submit, um, you know, a, a working copy of the stuff that you have. Uh, get those points locked in and then if you manage to get a few more points right before the deadline, uh, you won't be too worried about not getting any points for the assignment. Okay, so let's, let's try to submit things here. So again, the first thing I wanna do is uh, actually uh, run uh, this. So this is essentially just the base sources that we gave you. Uh, I haven't really made any changes here and you can what you're gonna see here unsurprisingly is that I don't get any points, okay? But let's try to submit that. Uh, let's see what happens, okay? So now the first thing before you submit is to make sure that your working directory is clean. This is the message you wanna see. There's nothing, uh, no changes in my working directory that haven't been committed, and there's no commits in this repository that have not been pushed to my remote repository. Um, you can see that this matches, um, you know, this repository here. This is my origin matches the repository that I've configured test 161 to use. Okay, so now let's submit. Um, now you have to submit from your uh, source repository. If you try to submit somewhere else, it'll complain. Uh, this means you need to be in your source directory, so let's go over there. And now let's submit assignment one. So what's happening here is a test 161 is checking out a copy of your repository into a temporary directory. It's gonna build things and then before it submits, it's gonna run the test locally. Uh, this is pretty important um, because we want you to get a sense of the score that you're gonna get on the backend server before you actually submit. Uh, so you can see what happens here. Um, I check out the latest uh, ref. I'll show you some things that can go wrong in a minute here. 
Uh, I made everything, everything worked okay. And then I ran the tests. Uh, and unfortunately, as I knew, I'm not going to earn any points for this assignment. And so in this case, test 161 actually short circuits and does not allow you to submit. Um, that's because there's no point in you putting load on our backend servers if you haven't completed any portions of the assignment. Okay. Happily, I happen to have um, a working copy of the synchronization program that's just lying around. So let me do this, push that in there, uh, and I'm going to show you a couple of things that can go wrong. So here's a case where I have some um, uncommitted changes in my working directory. Now it turns out um, I can bmake, bmake install these guys, and I can go over to my root directory and I can run assignment one, and this, uh, I think, some of these should work, um, maybe not all of them. Oh, I haven't implemented the reader writer tests. Oh well, okay, I think everything else should work. Um, looks like my CV tests are running. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna get full credit here. I haven't implemented the reader writer tests. Uh, my reader writer locks actually work, so they'll work when we submit to the back end. Uh, but please don't do this. Please write those tests. Um, my synchronization.c just didn't have a copy of them. Um, so again, you know, we're waiting here uh, for the test to complete. Some of these tests are kind of kind of slow, uh, but I think we're into the end. Okay, so I got 20 out of 50. Oh, I also didn't uh, finish the synchronization problem. So what you can see is I have, uh, I'm pretty sure I have working locks. Yep, lock test one, uh, lock test two two and lock test three all pass and I have working CVs. So CV test one, two, three, four, five. So that's where my 20 points are coming from. I got zero out of 10 on reader writer locks. Um, they work actually, but they can't be tested here because I didn't have write the tests. And I got uh, zero out of 10 on both the way of and stoplight problem. Okay. So, you know, I hope you wouldn't be satisfied with a score like this, but let's see what happens when we actually submit. So the, the first thing to do uh, that I want to point out is let's go into my source directory, and let's try to submit here. Uh, let's try to submit this assignment. So I, you know, I think I'm going to get 20 out of 20. Uh, I submitted my source directory. Um, the everything's being being cloned and built. And here's the thing. Uh, unfortunately, I'm in for a pretty nasty surprise here um, because what I'm about to find out is that. I didn't submit my changes. I didn't commit my changes. So the latest version of my repository is the old version that doesn't have uh, these 20 points that I just added. And so I can't submit. Uh, so that's, again, if you look at the git status, uh, I've got changes here, so I need to commit those. Let's say working locks and CVs, yay. You can always be happy in your commit messages. All right, so now I've committed them and get status again. And now let me try to submit here. And here I can show you something else that can potentially go wrong. All right, so test161 is uh, cloning my repository into a temporary directory. Uh-oh, okay. So this is another error that you might see, and here's the problem. The current commit, um, if I look at the git log for my source directory, this guy, f566 blah blah blah, um, is not in the remote. So the problem is this commits in my local directory, but I haven't pushed it to my remote repository. And so uh, test 161 isn't going to be able to get it. And again, here's another problem. My working directory is clean, but my branch is ahead of origin master. So what I need to do is push my changes. Slow here. The internet Wi-Fi is, hotel Wi-Fi is not particularly good. Not sure exactly why this is taking so long. All right, sweet. So now here's the magic message. My branch is up to date with my origin and the working directory is clean. Now let's run, let's submit assignment one. Okay. So same thing is happening over and over again. We may try to make this a bit faster in the future, maybe cache a copy of your, uh, your remote for us to use. Um, same thing, I'm going to run the test locally. And in this case, what's going to happen is you can see it's actually starting to run some of the lock tests. Like lock test one is running. Uh, that's going to complete successfully. Other lock tests are working. Now I'm onto the CV tests. Um, before, some of these weren't run because uh, my locks didn't work, and so everything else short circuited after that. Um, okay. 
And I'm going to go over here, and while that's running, I just want to show you uh, what happened to me before. So I submitted a few minutes ago, and uh, this is the output from the, the Test 161 server. Um, so there are some differences between our uh, build environment and your build environment. In particular, we copy over what's called an overlay when we before we test things on the remote server. So I had something that was working locally. I submitted it. Um, the test 161 system will let me submit it. And what happened was it didn't build on the back end. So why didn't that happen? Well, if you look down here in the build output, which we nicely show you on the web page, um, there were, uh, there were uh, the reader writer lock tests were trying to use my reader writer lock primitives, but they're not defined anywhere. So this is just you know a, a note that you might want to keep in mind, which is that there are some changes between the local environment and the remote environment. And, and this is unavoidable. We're not giving you our tests for reader writer locks. And so we do need you to write those primitives so that the reader writer lock tests can use them. If you don't, you'll see an error message like this. Um, OK. But hopefully that's pretty helpful. You can see that you know, essentially the output of every step here is displayed when things start to build. All right, so now I'm in good shape. Uh, you can see that um, I, the, the Test 161 program has, has determined that I'm going to earn some points. Here's my estimated scores. So that's pretty important. And now this is critical. So here are the collaboration guidelines for the assignment. When you submit to the Test 161 backend, you're giving us a copy of your repository, and we will aggressively use that copy to detect any sort of cheating. Um, so please, you need to certify this. Uh, you have to answer yes or no. I'm going to hit yes. And now your submission has been created. So this is pretty cool. So now you can see what's, what's going on here. So here's my old one that was aborted, but here's a new submission. And this page will update live as things go along. So now you can see here, um, what happens is these are expanding and, and contracting as things are running. You can start to see some points adding up here. I got some points um, for one of the reader writer lock tests, which is weird. Um, oh, my reader writer lock tests work. That's right. I just couldn't test them locally. Um, so let's see here. Um, so yeah, and as this is going along, you're seeing dependencies are being processed and, and, and tests are running. Um, so far, I've got a 25 out of 50. I'm expecting a 30 because my reader writer locks actually work, um, but some of the some of the other tests are going to fail. The waymaking test is going to fail. Uh, it looks like there's one test that's still running here, which is CV test two. It's pretty slow. You remember that's the one that does all this waiting and you know things like that. So that one's still going. Um, and in a second, I hope it's going to finish up. Boom. Okay. Cool. So that's done, that's done. Everything's gonna collapse. And I got 30 out of 50, there it is. So now this page is updated, you don't have to do anything, you can just sit here looking at it. Uh, I've submitted uh, two targets in total, two to the assignment one uh, grading target. Best score on this assignment is 30 out of 50. Um, this uh, gives you some information about what was submitted. So if you click on either of these submissions, uh, this tells me the commit ID, uh, the repository came from my user ID, and this will show your partner if you submit on behalf of someone else. Um, I don't know what this is. This is interesting. Yihang built this really cool uh, UI for this. So if I uh, drill down here, this shows me everything that was run as part of the test. So this is the build process. Um, reader writer lock tests, CV tests. We'll work on putting these in a better order in the future, but for now they're, they're just kind of in order in which they completed or in order in which they were started, I think. Um, and you can see, you know, this, this highlights where I got points, where I lost points. So my whale mating test didn't uh, work. Um, you'll see that the boot worked fine, but SP1 just failed. Um, now, one thing you may notice here is that the output um, is quite different than what you would see locally. And this is intentional. Uh, we suppress a lot of output when we do the remote trusted testing because we want it to run a bit faster. And we also don't want you to use this as diagnostic output. So if you looked at this output, here's just a bunch of periods. It doesn't have the nice printfs that you see locally where it prints which car is going through the intersection. And again, that's that's intentional. Uh, we don't want to provide that for you because this is not designed to help you iterate. Um, same thing with SP1. It doesn't seem like SP1 generated any output. I think it hangs. Yeah, SP1 hangs on failure in this particular case. 
Okay, so this is you know uh, just an example of how to use this tool. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, really happy uh, with the tool. We think it's going to be really help you guys out this semester. Uh, many thanks to Scott and Yihong for putting this together. Um, we're going to keep working on the web UI. If you have any suggestions about how to improve things, um, or if you have complaints, you find bugs, please let us know. Uh, but this is something we'll be using throughout the semester, uh, so please start getting used to it. Um, and we hope uh, we hope that you earn 50 out of 50. Uh, go full points. Uh, good luck.